Chuck, you know these explainers, they just sort of come to me in these visions during the day. Okay. And then uh -huh. I tell our producers, we got to do an explainer on that. And they just right. jump on it. So, uh, so psilocybin was... is actually responsible for <laughs> the explainers that we do. Who knew? I got my own cocktail of brain chemicals doing, doing its job. Right on. So I wanted to explore uh, atoms versus molecules. Oh, okay. oh, really? Let me tell yeah, you yeah. something, little atom. That's cool. <laughs> Tiny little particles Atom. that you are. Yeah, atoms versus molecules. So just some a little bit of prehistory here. Okay. The Greeks imagined that there was the smallest version of any substance that would then be indivisible of that substance. And so they used the word from the Greek, which meant indivisible, which and that word happens to be atom, and that word has stuck with us. So little did they know... There are the smallest versions of things, although they're the smallest version of elements. The smallest version of an element is an atom. There's no such thing as a wood atom in that sense, right? Or a, 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 um, an, an air atom, right? You have to some, often you have to sort of break it down further through the molecules, and you get to what the molecules are made of, you get to atoms. Then you break the atoms down, then you get to what the atoms are made of. And right now, we've got quarks. T together, they make the protons and neutrons, and we have electrons, all right, in our experience of the universe. So there the, you have it. But I want to The uncommitted sort of, part of the atom, the electron. What's that? The electron. Oh, oh yeah, it can, it can yeah, move around. Yeah, I'll yeah. just go hang say, out. I'm going to hang out until, fact, until yeah, I don't fact, feel like being here. I'm going to get a better offer over there. <laughs> I think I got a better that's offer. Called, <laughs> that's called an ionized atom. That's right. The electron done left. That's right. <laughs> the the See electron em. left. <laughs> wait, wait. But you know what else you can do with electrons? You, they can only be given up, but they can be shared. Oh. Okay? So you got uh, you can, two atoms that can share electrons. And the sharing of electrons is precisely what a molecule is. That's what holds them together. Okay, but here's the point I'm gonna make and why I wanna say atoms versus molecules. Right. Okay, just hear this out. You ready? Okay. Okay. The atom, the element hydrogen, at, at, in our life experience, in the temperatures and pressures we live in, is a gas. Hydrogen is a gas, okay? It is, it is flammable, okay? So if you have hydrogen there, and you light a match, it rapidly combines with oxygen and it explodes. It basically explodes, right? The Hindenburg filled with hydrogen, it's a very light gas, much, much lighter than air. When that caught fire, I think it was in Lakehurst, New Jersey, the whole thing went. The whole thing went. Best okay. aeronautical move ever. Well, I'm just saying, I like, it, yeah, well, I mean, come on, let's. How smart were these people? Like, let's take something highly flammable. <laughs> oh, you were being you, yeah, you, and fill a giant, um, fill a giant <laughs> balloon with it. <laughs> I okay. mean, I know it's a, I know it's a terrible tragedy. Oh, the humanity! Oh, the humanity! But oh, yes, yes, yes. Still that's not the, smart. The, the still live, not a smart move. The, the the live well, it worked until then, right? I mean, right. So you, you get to say it after the fact. Point is, hydrogen is flammable. Okay. Oxygen is not itself flammable, but it makes other things burn rapidly. Okay? That's why uh, when they when the oxygen mask drop in the airplane, you have to extinguish your cigarette. <laughs> okay. okay. Which may be the reason Whoever why they dropped that. in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> you have to extinguish your cigarette. Okay. So, hydrogen is flammable. Oxygen makes other things burn. You bring the two together in a two to one ratio, you get H2O, mm -hmm. a brand new substance that extinguishes fires. Nice. That's kind of cool, actually. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So you cannot extrapolate the behavior of a molecule based on what you know the properties are of its base atoms. Oh. It's completely different. I got another one for you. Ready? Okay. Yes. There's a metal, one of the lightest metals. It's called sodium. Right. Sodium is a metal. Right. I think it even floats on water. I think it is slightly less dense. It's like, and it's very soft. You can cut it with a knife. Okay. This is sodium. 
and <clears throat> it is highly explosive. I, I shouldn't have said it floats on water because you don't want to do that experiment because sodium in water reacts explosively. Wow. Okay? Explosively. Then there's this gas called chlorine, right? which for a while was considered as part of the the, the, the chemical gas warfare in the Second World War. Sure if you inhale thing. chlorine, it's, it's highly caustic to your lungs. Mm. You, you can't breathe. You suffocate and you die. Damn. Okay? Okay. But with very clean lungs. <laughs> clean lungs. Very clean lungs, though. <laughs> clean, well, clean, because there's nothing there. Right. That's why. It's like a painful, <laughs> awful death. But they autopsy, you're like, this guy's chest is clean as I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> so... You, and by the way, chlorine bleach. I mean, this is, you know, part of what's going on there. But anyhow, so if you combine equal parts chlorine and sodium, okay? Right. You get sodium chloride, which is ordinary table salt. Wow. You just went from noxious to delicious with <laughs> no problem. Right. <laughs> so, so there's so many examples of this that it's just, it's a chemist playground really you, you you almost don't care what properties it has as an atom let me play in the molecule sandbox and see what i can make out of it and what properties it might then have by the way some atoms have very clear and useful properties like carbon um, is available in many different forms uh, one of them is graphite which you use do people still use pencils all right this stuff in a pencil and um and we call that lead but we shouldn't. I remember when I was a kid, the paint on the outside, the, the yellow paint on the pencil had lead in it. And when they try to get rid of lead in the environment, that they get rid of the lead in lead pencils. And I said, well, then how are you going to write? You know? And it, but it's just referring to the LEAD metal in the paint, not the LEAD form of carbon in as graphite. But anyway, so the other forms of carbon, there's, there's um, Buckminster Fullerene. What? Hold on. What is Buckminster Fullerene? I've never heard of it. You didn't know about that? Never heard of it. No, not about that. Nothing. Nothing about it. That is that is a carbon molecule that has 60 carbon atoms. It's a carbon molecule 60. with 60 carbon atoms. And the 60 carbon atoms are the nodes of the seams of a classic soccer ball. Oh, okay. So they're they fit together like right. like a molecular it fits Lego. And, like a, <laughs> and so and so the, so it makes a hollow ball nice. so that's the, and it's it's like the old uh, geodesic domes it's named after right. buckminster yeah. fuller and the geodesic domes but by the way little, little known fact the very first buckminster fuller dome was not made by buckminster fuller it was made by zeiss engineers in the 1920s when they invented a new optical projector for a planetarium and they said what are we going to test this on? We don't have any round ceilings. So they said, what, what's the cheapest way we can just make a round ceiling? And so these are good German engineers from the 1920s. They got their sticks together. They stuck them together. And they created a geodesic dome. The very first one ever was made by Zeiss in like 1923, something like that. So, and, and, but later on, but it got forgotten because they just did it to produce a different product, right? The planetarium projector, the Zeiss Mark I. And so... But anyhow, so that's neither here nor there. Actually, it is oh, there. Still it's still fascinating. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. It is there. So, <laughs> it is there. It's just not here. Right. So, um, so that's an, another one. And another one is uh, graphene. Graphene is like single layer thin uh, sheet of carbon atoms. Hmm. And it's it has very interesting properties. So, so, so atoms can be interesting unto themselves. That's all I'm trying to say. But when you start combining them with other atoms, oh my gosh, to just get ready for the sideshow, for the circus nice. of what what of what that can deliver for you. Now I can give you some more sort of fun examples. Um, do you remember the per periodic table of elements? Their columns, all right. Yes, yes. So so the columns are not accidental, all right. All the atoms in a column have the same configuration of electrons in their outer shell which means each one can make exactly the same molecule as the other with other atoms oh wow that's really okay. cool okay so now now if you ever wonder 
why uh, why science fiction writers are always talking about silicon based life. You ever hear right. that? You yes, know, of course. Silicon. Yeah. yeah. So, and, instead and of carbon. Star Trek episode. Instead of carbon, right? Silicon. <laughs> this famous Star Trek episode with the Horda, which was the Horda was this life form. It looked kind of like a turtle, but with no head or legs, and it kind of waddled. And it was basically made of rock. And once they analyzed it, they found out yes, it is just made of rock. Okay, and and uh, silicon is not one of the active ingredients in rocks. Silicon is one of the most common ingredients in Earth's crust. So most rocks are, have significant silicon in them. There's a silicon-based life, and this was their attempt to explore that. So why would you do that? Why not chlorine-based life? I'll tell you why. Because silicon is directly below carbon on the periodic table. In fact, you can make more molecules using the carbon atom than all other molecules combined on the periodic table. So oh, it's wow. not an accident that we're carbon-based. And carbon is like the... Uh, how do you, how do you, Third most chemically active ingredient in the universe. In the universe. In the universe. So you went around saying, oh, we're life on Earth and we're special. Well, what are you made of? Hydrogen and oxygen and carbon. Dude, these are the three most common ingredients, act chemically active ingredients in the universe. So. Silicon-based life would look down on us. <laughs> <laughs> they would say, yeah, we're, we're a little more special than yeah. you are. Well, carbon, there's about five times as much carbon in the universe as silicon. So you don't need to appeal to silicon for this. Plus silicon bonds are different, right? At, at, at Goldilocks temperatures, silicon bonds are very strong and they're hard to break, which means you can't do many experiments with it. Right. Whereas carbon, you can make a bond, it can hang on, oh, let's break that, and then it tries to find other bonds. And, you, and you, it, it's largely responsible for the, for the biodiversity uh, on Earth. Just simply because carbon, carbon is, is, is highly go, carbon goes with anybody. So in principle, wherever you had a carbon atom in life, you, you should be able to swap it with a silicon atom. So you have a carbon dioxide, there's silicon dioxide. Oh, carbon wow. monoxide, silicon monoxide. All of those match up because the elements, it is directly it's exactly beneath it. Directly below carbon. All right, so yes. now, mm -hmm. since, since we've gone through all this, here's the question. Which one is cooler? Who wins in the atoms versus molecules face off? Oh, yeah. So I it have to, thank you. I'd have I'd have to say molecules. Because, you know, we have 118 atoms. We have a bazillion molecules. And in fact, the life as we know it would not be possible without them. So let me just make that clear. And another point that's been buzzing around the internet, I'm gonna make sure to say it here. By the way, 98% of all atoms in the universe are hydrogen and helium. Holy crap. Everything else that makes everything the rest about our lives is in the small 2% of the periodic table of elements. Okay, so in other words, hydrogen and helium are at the top. All the rest are 2% and less of the universe. Okay, so here's the point. That means the universe is binary okay think about that they, right all right so if you wanted to say uh being binary is the joint and that's how everybody should be uh well you wouldn't have a universe without that other two percent right that gives meaning and shape to, to every, everything that is to basically to everything right so just because some group is not in the majority is not reason to think that they're not relevant. Mm. And the most extreme example of that are the elements on the periodic table. Look at that, the universe. Is there anything it cannot teach us? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, atoms by definition, all the other atoms are on the atom spectrum. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, well, that is super cool. Okay, yeah, so I think molecules win this one. But I just wanted to highlight that cause, uh, in case people hadn't heard any of those bits and pieces before. Well, i got to tell you, that is almost as cool as Buckminster Fullerene. Oh, which, yeah, yeah. Which is going to be mouthful. the name of my new band. <laughs> That's a band name if I ever heard one. Welcome to the stage, ladies and gentlemen. Chicago, it's Buckminster Fullerene. <laughs> 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 
So Chuck, I think you need multiple lives so that you can live out these these spontaneous fantasies that you grace us with on Star Talk. Yeah, man, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> it's the, Ch the Chuck multiverse is what the multiverse. That is. That's my multiverse. All right, Chuck, we gotta we gotta call it quits here. Uh, always good to have you there, man. Always a pleasure. All right, this has been Star Talk Explainer Videos: Atoms versus Molecules. Neil deGrasse Tyson here. Keep looking up. Thank you.